Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to the last installment of our uh, Be Relevant, Stay Relevant uh, presentation. So I'm excited to be able to walk through and pull everything together that we've been talking about for the past five uh, presentations uh, in partnership with Cal State Fullerton um, and the Center for Family Business. So what we've been chatting about for the last couple sessions here really comes down to uh, three different buckets. Um, and now we've got a fourth uh, bucket in here. So um, at McKinsey, we have um, strategic brand positioning uh, guidelines, but everything that we're doing now in this uh, COVID um, health crisis that we're in, I think is really relevant to everything we've been talking about. So I thought I'd uh, pull this out there. So the first bucket that we had um, was our customer analysis and taking a look at what's going on in data inventory, right? Sales data, marketing data, industry data. So we've taken a look and organized that first. Uh, the second thing that we did is we pulled back and we started taking a look at uh, market mapping. What else is happening in our customers and prospects lives, right? So we're looking at um, audience analysis, competitive brand marketing, what else is happening out there? The third thing that we did is we started taking a look um, in customer profiling and talking to our customers. This includes doing uh, customer research, uh, customer feedback opportunities to really start um, understanding and have a two-way conversation with them. And where that all leads to is having now this readiness toolkit to be able to have, and by the end of this, uh, we should be able to have our customer personas, brand positioning, uh, journey mapping, and what we want our customer experience to be. So this is um, the first three steps here is pulling together all this information so that we can now start putting together uh, this readiness toolkit to be able to go to market more effectively. And if we come back to this be relevant, stay relevant, um, the entire theory here is that we wanna understand in order to be relevant uh, with our customers and prospects, we need to understand what's happening in their lives. Uh, so walking through these three different steps in beginning um, is really understanding what's happening with them, what um, issues and struggles, what their pain points are, who are these people in general, and how can we best be of service to them? And that's really um, how we're gonna be relevant uh, to them going forward. In regards to staying relevant, this is not, and just a reminder, this is not a one-time thing, uh, an exercise that we can do, and then we put it on the shelf and we don't think about it again, right? I mean, this, uh, this entire experience that we're going through right now is a uh, very good reminder, um, I mean, an accelerated reminder that things change, people change, um, and we need to be adaptive um, in our business and services um, going forward. So um, I encourage you to take a look at everything that you've had in the past of what you have going on. Let's put a new lens on it to see how we can be relevant today. But this is something that we want to be continuing, um, continually updating um, and evolving through time. You know, I love this uh, uh, quote here. So it's not the strongest of species that survive, nor the most intelligent. It's the ones that are most adaptable to change. That I think is what we are going to see is the companies that are coming out stronger um, out of this are the ones that are adaptive to change, that are not holding so tight um, to their preconceived beliefs beforehand, uh, but the ones that are gonna be evolving and changing uh, through this and evolving with our customers. There's so many um, incredible opportunities that are going to come out of this. And we just need to be um, willing and flexible to let go of possibly where we were um, and how things were uh, to be, be able to figure out how we can change and evolve with them. So the last thing that I wanna touch on, and this is, um, this is a discipline that uh, could be an entire six series um, uh, webinar and web um, kind of cast here, but is, um, Last year, strategic foresight. So last year, I was blessed to be able to uh, be introduced to um, KEDGE and the Future School and the teachings of strategic foresight. I think that they are extremely relevant to what is happening uh, today and what we've been talking about of being able to stay relevant or be relevant, stay relevant. So strategic foresight is really, it's kind of a um, sister there with um, scenario planning um, and modeling out our business for the future and coming up with different um, 
different avenues of what the future could look like. So, but it's giving us some framework in order to uh, plan for the future of where we want to go. So um, one, most of this slide and all this information is coming from Kedge in the Future School. I put the uh, resource down here at the bottom. I highly recommend this as a resource, but I at least wanted to share this first um, slide with you because it's so relevant um, of what is going on today. So um, really, what uh, or where is strategic foresight used? This is used across the board. This is not just for corporations, but governments and nonprofits and startups can use a strategic process in this idea of mapping out what possible futures and scenarios can look like. I will tell you, uh, research shows that companies and organizations that uh, future plan um, and have, have mapped out future scenarios are more successful um, and more um, resilient to change and to these uncertain times than those that are not planning because they've thought through these different scenarios. Um, while nobody can predict the future of what's gonna happen, um, companies that think about it on a regular basis um, and a kind of scenario plan out are more, um, they've got more resources at their hands to be able to come out stronger. So anybody can be using uh, strategic foresight. When is it used? Um, this is used in this whole theory here, obviously for strategy planning, it's used for innovation and what an exciting time to do that right now. Uh, change management with our team. What can our teams and our projects and products look like going forward? This could also be used for personal development. So this is not just for corporations to figure out what's going on, but these are even for individuals um, during this uncertain time at any time really is how do we start figuring out what our personal future looks like and what we want it to be just because we decided at a young age whatever our career was that this is the path that we're on that does not mean that it cannot be changed that our future can't be different than what it is today um, so this can be done in future development too um, how it's used like i said this this is there's an entire series uh, and learning and discipline on this but especially we've talked about, so we've been uh, uh, teasing out a little bit of strategic foresight in each one of these modules that we've talked to before. So the first two really discover what are uh, biases out there? What is it that we believed already was happening? Um, and then how do we ex start exploring new possibilities? And that's really when I uh, shared those five different disciplines when we're looking out there for market mapping of, um, social, political, environmental, technology, um, economic. When we start looking at these different areas to explore. This is really um, the beginning stages of strategic foresight. So once we're exploring and seeing what's out there, then we start in the next two buckets down here is mapping out uh, what these different futures could look like um, and creating and start uh, scenario planning out there. So the reason why this is so important um, and not just strategic foresight, but um, uh, doing all of this work is really because we want to be adaptive um, and resilient and transformative in this period of time. Uh, right now, um, as I said from the previous slide, we need to figure out how we can all adapt uh, because while we all want to go back to normal here as quickly as possible, I venture to say that normal is not going to look exactly the way that it did before we started this. Um, I think that there's a few things or a lot of things that are going to go back hopefully to normal, uh, but there's other things that um, we're just going to change the way that we're interacting with each other, the way that we're learning, the way that we're doing things, and how we're servicing um, uh, ourselves and our uh, prospects out here. So um, this is a really exciting um, um, discipline to be able to be leaning into. So like I said, last year I, was, I went to a three-day conference up in Portland to start learning about this. I've been certified in strategic foresight and now in, a, in an um, a year-long program with the Future School in Kedge uh, to be able to continue doing this. It's, it's such an exciting area that we're excited to start um, implementing at the work that we're doing here at McKinsey um, and would love to be able to chat with anybody that's interested in learning more um, and sharing resources that we have um, of how we can start infusing this into your business as we all start coming out of um, this in this um, kind of transformational time that we'll call it. So I am so excited and honored. Um, hopefully that you've made it to the last of these six um, webinars with me. 
and would love to be able to chat with you about any questions that you have uh, throughout each one of these. Um, I know throughout the, um, each one of the presentations, I've shared different um, documents and resources, very willing to email and share them out to you um, of what we have. So feel free to reach out to me um, either on a phone call or email if you have any questions of whatever we can do at this time to be able to lean in um, and share together. So thank you so much um, and always stay safe, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you um, in the near future.